Brian Brown doing versus Aiden Breyer here. For Breyer, just 15 years old. Carlos Eldrazi, though, bringing him all the way to the finals. Brought up mtgaccess.org. Yeah, friend of uh, Rio Trevathan, I would imagine. That they is the team. They played a team open together. Got some stiff competition, though. Brian Brown doing a Legacy aficionado in Miracles. That's his deck. This deck plays a lot like Legacy Miracles. If you can believe everything you hear online, according to a Brian Brown doing tweet, he played against Carlos Aldrazi in seven of the 15 Swiss rounds. I would believe that. I would believe that. And he won enough of them to be in the top eight. Enough. But I bet enough is not all. This Carlos Aldrazi deck, if the data shows through, is the best deck in no bandless modern. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying it would always be the best deck, but this weekend it certainly was. He'll have to beat it again. And it's... It might not have any bad matchups in the field. I don't know. Yeah, the deck it's powerful. is certainly busted. These decks are both largely analogs to Legacy decks. A lot of similarities. There's a Colorless Eldrazi deck in Legacy. Blue-white, Miracles. A little bit watered down without since he's divining top legal. But Brian just gets to play top. And Brian is playing a port of a Legacy deck that was once the best deck in Legacy. Whereas Aiden's playing a deck that has a Legacy deck... It's never really been Tier 1. It's been a deck that can hang, but it's not totally busted in that format. Yeah. But there's no Force of Will here, which really matters. It, it actually does matter also that Brian is on four Mental Misstep that really don't play here. I wonder if we saw more no Banlist Modern. It's possible we'd actually see the same evolution we saw in Eldrazi Winter, where Colors Eldrazi was the best deck Week 1, and when it became clear that everyone was supposed to play Eldrazi, then blue-white actually became better because things like Chalice of the Void, Simeon Spear Guide, who cares if you're playing a mirror? Yeah, some blue-white Eldrazi did show up to this tournament, and I wouldn't be the least bit surprised if that was part of the motivation there. Yeah, they're just favored in the mirror. They don't have dead cards. If you have time to set up, Eldrazi Displacer turns off Merit Lage. There's a few things to like about that. Just blink that one out of existence. I was always a bigger fan of the blue-red Eldrazi deck, the JC Tau Pro Tour winning build. Because I like Vile Aggregate. I, like, I just want to hit them. I don't want to yeah. mess around activating stuff. Just hit them. You like that one because it's red-blue and it's two-thirds of the way to Grixis. Yeah. Blue-white, that's you're going the wrong way. Yeah, that is Turn white, the car around. White cards? No, thank you. I like that one because it was a stack of draft commons. Yes. I already did a stream after that, or just played Ayavugan, Eldrazi Temple, and then just all draft common Eldrazi. Stuff like 3-4 four for 4. <laughs> and just like really, you know, all the, all the horrible ones. It was pretty good. Yeah? Yeah. Did yeah. you still like beat all the non-Eldrazi <laughs> decks? It was like 50-50. <laughs> <laughs> I went 3-1 in a daily. Oh, wow. <laughs> that is out of control. It was like hand, was it Hand of Emrakul? Is that the 3 4 for 4? So you just like didn't put Thought Not or Reality Spam? No, we just put like random ones. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Like Void Attendant. Just like, I don't know. Anything. We just like gathered Creature Hyphen Eldrazi and just like put some commons in. But they were, we, we played 4 Eye and 4 Temple. During Eldrazi Winter, my friend and business partner, Mike Hawthorne, won five IQs. Just five, five IQs playing Eldrazi. Yeah. Other people played other decks. Yeah, they, That's unreal. they foolishly played other, decks. played other decks. In Briar going to five here. Carlos Eldrazi can recover from fives. And indeed, the deck's you, just great. You want to mulligan very aggress aggressively to your two mana lands. If you don't yes. have them, your hands just don't really function. Right. Every hand, you need to have one of the eight lands in the opener. Otherwise, your deck, your, your deck's good because your cards cost less mana than is printed in the upper right-hand corner. If you actually are paying retail price for these cards, this, this deck's terrible. Yes. Some of your cards are still pretty good. Thought Not Seer and Matt. Just, th just two. Thought Not Seer and Reality Smasher are fine. Yeah. Everything else is terrible. Eh, and Bringer is pretty nice. I don't for, know. Not, in Modern for six? Eh. Like for four, it's a good card. Well, for four, it's out of control. Yeah. Brian starts out. Hall of Fountain. We are underway with our finals. It's Ponder.
Some of our Carlos Eldrazi players this weekend decided to put Mental Misstep in their decks. Of the two in the finals, neither of them did. Waters the deck down a little bit too much. One of the draws of Mental Misstep in the other decks actually tends to be fighting mi Mental Misstep wars. Sure, and Aiden doesn't care. Mm -hmm. I guess he's also playing a Chalice on one, so you don't want a Chalice on one and then draw a Misstep. Yeah, you just want to lean on the Chalice. Back to Aiden. Does he have a land? Ghost Quarter, go. And I don't know that he has a second land. Yeah, I think he has a Wastes. Ugh. But remember, these are all fair lands. He's just play If he's just paying mana for things, this is not good enough. Looks like there is a Chalice of the Void, though. Okay. So on turn two, if that's good, it does interrupt a good amount of what Brian's up to. Yeah, two Spell Snare, two Mana Leak are Brian's interactions there. Shocks to a couple detention spheres in the 16. main as well. Here's counterbalance from Brian. Runs it out. Card's not great to spend against Aiden, especially not now that Aiden, now that Aiden drew a Cavern of Souls. I'll make Chalice of the Void looks like on one. See if a blind counter is in the cards. And Brian, he I guess he did he know off ponder. Is that yeah, why he, he didn't? Kept, okay. He kept the ponder. Yeah. So he just didn't bother revealing. Says go three lands. Reality Smasher for Aiden, but right now lands are just tapping for one. So two mana, Umazawa's Jite. Brian will try to Brian blind counter that. Fails. Jite's in play. Now that a plane's on top of Brian's deck, he may crack a fetch land if he doesn't want it. And he doesn't. Yeah, Brian really doesn't generally need m more than his fourth land drop. You want to get up to Jace the Mind Sculptor. You know, like Celestial Colonnade? No. Yeah, this is not the format for that. It's modern. Kind of. Yeah, and I this guess. Is, this is a lot closer to Legacy than modern. Yeah, lands entering the battlefield tap are really rough in this format. The one that's forgivable is Cloud Post because it at least generates more mana down the line. And Brian just curves up to a turn four Jace, and he immediately starts Fate Sealing. And uh, the way Aiden's been playing here, you see three lands. None of them are the good lands. You kind of want to block for those. I say a land was drawn there. It's a waste. If Aiden had drawn a temple, we would have seen Smasher. Yeah. S still thought not Seer is going to be good. It's uncounterable. That cavern is on Eldrazi. Brian's hand, path to exile. Mental misstep, supreme verdict. It's possible, Brian, that Brian could lose from here. I first didn't think so. He'll take the supreme verdict. Yeah, well, his hand is all air. There's a chalice on one. Yeah. Not to mention that the mental misstep was not really anything in the first place. Yeah, Brian does have Jace to help things out. But you're right, the other two cards don't do anything. Jace has a lot of things he'd like to shuffle away. He's really going to miss that supreme verdict. So we will unsummon the Thought Not Seer. You do draw a card when Thought Not Seer leaves the battlefield. Fetch line to play for Brian. Would love to brainstorm that Jace next turn. It could be a straight draw threes. He'd shuffle away a bunch of cards that are trapped under Chalice. But here's Eye of Ugin from Aiden, and now Reality Smasher might have a say in things. And it does. It's uncounterable. I like the way that Aiden holds it over the table. As if Brian might do something. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. Brian actually gets to use the counterbalance trigger to see if he wants to shuffle away the top card with the air at Mesa. Reality Smasher will hit Jace. Top card's another counterbalance. Brian will probably shuffle that away. But his Planeswalker's gone. His hand is trapped under Chalice of the Void. Despite a Moldify from Aiden and a turn for Jace from Brian, it's become a very even game here. And this is the kind of thing that you always saw in Eldrazi Winter. A player would tell you, I'm really good against Eldrazi. I have all these tools that are powerful. I have Spreading Seas. I have a bunch of Path to Exiles, Attention Spheres. And the Eldrazi player, most of five, sometimes four, has some stupid land, <laughs> casts something busted ahead of schedule, and you still just lose. In this case, the Chalice of the Void is doing a lot of the heavy lifting. Yeah, sixth land from Brian. We'll go back over to Aiden Breyer. Draws Mattery Shaper. Nice one mana play. Starts Thought Not Seer. 
I love how much mana Eye of Ugin makes. We're going to cast Thought Knot. We're going to equip a Gite. We might play Matter Reshaper 2. Mental Misstep does not counter Thought Knot Seer. Nothing does. Brian's <laughs> hand, Mana Leak, Path. Uh, three one mana cards trapped under Chalice and a Mana Leak when there's a Cavern of Souls in play. Yep. Great. Taking the Mana Leak is at least beneficial because you get to cast <laughs> more than one spell on a turn. In theory, it does something. Yeah, well, it does something right now, right? Yeah. Because he's tapped the cavern. He saw his Eye of Ugin generating mana and gets to cast at least a matter Shaper. Smasher will pick up the GTA, a swing in for nine. Or make that, sorry, five. But it's actually still a two-turn clock. Brian goes down to nine. Mm -hmm. And he has one top deck. And he's going to have to shuffle. The top card of his deck doesn't solve things right now. Right. There are two copies of the Supreme Verdict in the main. One has already been exiled. There's a Terminus on top of that, though. Two outs? Yep. All right. It's just that. It's looking like that's going to be it. You don't get redraws with Ponder or Peter Dane either. If he draws a repeal for the Chalice, can he stay alive? So you can't actually repeal Chalice on one because it's, it equals X. It has to be exactly equal to the cost. <laughs> oh. So you can't overpay oh. on it. And yeah, BBD's seen enough. We're packing it in. Yeah, so Aiden Breyer, Carlos Eldrazi, flexing its muscles there. Mull to five, no problem. Think about how weak the draw was there. Mull to five. No broken lands on turn one or turn two or turn three. And he still wins. I'm yeah. not saying that it's Brian did anything wrong or anything like that. However, that's just showing how powerful the deck is. That it even has cards strong enough to get it back from that board state is really impressive. Yeah. I mean, Chalice of the Void is just so good, and it gets better in the format the more people load up on ones. Saw a hand, Ponder Pierdain, Mental Misstep doesn't play here, Path to Exile turned off. The Chalice was just great. All right, Ryan, well, I assume Brian's got some sideboard for this matchup. Everybody knew it was coming. We'll look what he has, and when we come back after these messages. Back here, Brian Brown doing losing the first game. He's going to have to claw, claw back if he wants Miracles to take the no ban list modern trophy. Otherwise, Aiden Breyer and Carlos Eldrazi, the best deck here of the tournament. Brian Sideboard, three Ceremonies Rejection. Okay, check. That counters everything in Aiden's deck. Two Celestial Purge, two Disenchant, two Surgical Extraction. Dispel, Gutshot, Engineer Explosives, Ruined Halo, Negate, and Pithing Needle. A couple things like here. Ruined Halo can turn off one of the bigger Eldrazi and just hit every copy in the deck. You don't mind the disenchant because Chalice of the Void is a pretty big problem. Yeah, it certainly uh, was that game. Jarvis, I was, I was watching one of Brian's games earlier, and Jarvis laughed that Brian had this gut shot, and he had it in in a Colors Eldrazi matchup, but it, it hit it's a mimic. Eldrazi mimic, and that, that can be a big deal. It is worth noting that Aiden's on four Cavernous Souls. The Ceremonies yep. injections are a little bit dicey, but you, you got to bring them in. That's what they're there for. And they might not work. But yep. they always counter Chalice. Right. It's a, it's a tough it's a tough deck to beat. Yes. For on aid side, four Leyland of the Void, two Pithing Needle, two Warping Whale, three Spellskite, three Ratchet Bomb, one Oblivion Sower. Do you like anything? The great cards are the two Pithing Needles. There's Sensei's Divining Tops, Chase the Mind Sculptor, some really good names. And the thing about it is Aiden has four main deck dismember. So he needs to bring in those two and find two other cards he's at least okay with. I like Oblivion Sower because it's big and it attacks. Yeah. Annalise Faustino in the top eight match brought in Ratchet Bombs in this matchup. Uh, probably just because she had enough to board out that they made sense. Yeah, it deals with Monastery Mentor. The, the leaving in one dismember accomplishes that goal a little bit better, so I actually don't even mind just leaving in yeah. one of them. Do you like them more or less than something like Umazawa's Jite? I actually don't mind Jite here because it makes it, once you connect, Brian can't really get set up with a Mentor. Okay. Yeah, the Cullis Eldrazi deck doesn't always have the greatest options of sideboarding because mm -hmm. its mana doesn't make any colors and a lot of lands only tap for Eldrazi cards. Right. The other thing about Jite is it helps you not overcommit in Supreme Verdict. Yeah. If you're just getting counters, hitting for a lot with one creature, you don't need to commit more creatures. Players drawing up their sevens here. I would be 
very weary if Aiden's able to keep a seven here, especially with Brian going down to six. Well, there's an eye of Ugin in the opener, so usually, usually yeah. any second land makes that keepable. Sometimes you don't even need a second land. If you have two mimics and your land's only eye, it's still possibly a keep. Yeah, that's that's a little greedy on seven. I like that a lot as a six card hand. Oh, for sure, a six. On the draw on seven, if I have eye, mimic, mimic, dot, not seer, I'm keeping. That hand's out of control. No, no, no more lands. Yeah, yeah, I understand. All right. It's like, man, I'm going to draw this card land, and then it's going to get you. If you're playing this deck and you mulligan that hand, I would recommend playing a different deck. If you don't, yeah, don't want to lose that way, <laughs> play something with a cantrip. Right. Aiden keeps. Nice. Keep that. <laughs> the high, high ceiling, <laughs> low floor hand. I like those ones. I mean, I like them on six. I don't generally love them on seven. Then again, you don't, you're don't. you the guy playing the cantrips, not playing the Colossus. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I've kept some sketchers with my cantrip <laughs> decks. <laughs> All right, both of us keeping. Turn one, Sensei's Divining Top from Brian. No misstep. All right, what do we have, Aiden? There's an Ivo again. How much Eldrazi is in the hand? Oh, oh he has ooh, Cavern. That's a really good second land. Cavern naming Eldrazi. I think that's because he wants to get this Pithing Needle down a stat. And he will. And I'd be amazed if Brian had mi mental missteps in post-board. No point in Brian tapping it to draw a card. And Sensei's Divining Top is the needle. Yeah, you, know, you just have to redraw it. The one reason you might want to do that is just because later down the line it's a spell for a Monastery Mentor. Uh, yeah, you can brainstorm it away if you draw. No, with a Jace, not a brainstorm. But you know, you yeah, does something later. He also has some answers to Pithing Needle. Yeah, I mean, Disenchant might be in his deck. If it is, this I, makes more sense. I assume it would be. And there's the main deck, the Tension Spheres. You can buy some time by repealing it. Preordain from Brian. Keeps one of the two. I have Ugin for Maiden. Lots of mana now. Eldrazi Mimic, sure. We'll not pay anything for that one. Bummer that you can't make that uncounterable, but Brian yeah. not having blue mana right now anyway. Uncounterable Mattery Shaper. We can do that. Trigger. The Mimic's a 3-2 now. Your turn. Thank you, Moto. <laughs> <laughs> I will have to click yes or no on that trigger. You will. Do you click yes or no? If you're playing it. Depends on how my opponent has been managing their clock. No, no, the trigger's on your side. You have to. Oh, I you understand. have to do it. I understand. I do different things against different people. That's way high level. It I is. always make my guy bigger. They're just better that way. <laughs> that, is, that is a very good point. Now, I'm, I'm a very contextual person. Very, very, I make very high context decisions. No. And Brian going to attack back. Monastery Mentor on turn three. And you were talking about how he might want that top in his hand in case he drew a mentor. Yeah. Makes sense here. I was talking about how it would be nice if Aiden kept one dismember in his deck, though. If he had that, I imagine it had been cast by now. More Mattery Shapers for Aiden. Nice one mana for it. Don't think he has more lands at the moment. If Brian's still at 18, maybe Monastery Mentor can do all the work here. That's possible. Aiden's going to offer some trades, and I know yeah. Brian's not interested in these ones. No, no, no. That's mentors the whole story. Yep. Passes back, but Brian's down to 12. On top of being very disruptive, where it makes Colossal Drazi so good is that it is really good at beating down. Now, Brian upkeep disenchants the Pithing Needle and makes a, a Monk token, and now he'll tap top to draw a card. Yeah, he's just aggroing. Yeah, and then he gets to draw top for turn so he can get another Monk. Right, tap. So top for turn. Get another monk. Both monks summoning sick at the moment. These are blockers. Yeah, they are, but their teacher might not be. <laughs> and another top. Land. Brian does have the terminus in his hand, but I don't think we need to do that just now. Also, unlike in Legacy, it's hard to get it back into your deck. Yeah, once I was going to say, it. you can't do that. You need two more <laughs> you lands. Need, you need Jace. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
The card's really bad to draw in this deck, isn't it? Yes. Mastery Mentor, however, will attack for four. Aiden down to 16. Yeah, you're, you're not blocking with that one. That attack makes sense. Though Aiden, the aggressor here, and Eldrazi Temple to enable that Reality Smasher would be very it's, good It's here. a lot of damage. Uh, oh, almost. We yeah, I see Blink Moth Nexus. He's got at least one six-mana creature with that Reality Smasher, so I don't know if he can really do anything additional here. He's offering the trade with the Mimic. I suppose just getting in your hits while they're good, Brian's just going to keep making more monks. Oh, the, the basic block here is to throw a monk in front of the Mimic, and then you have the option if you want to block Reshaper or not. I imagine that that chump block is pretty inviting in this spot. Now, the, the attack with the Mimic does look a little bit weird. Because yeah, Aiden's deck is monk. full of creatures that just make that Mimic larger. Yeah. And Brian's actually going to put one in front of each Mattery Shaper. This definitely feels like a spell's coming. Ooh, and he's going to gut shot the Mimic. This is really positive for Brian. Every, he's going to sweep the board. It's not like Aiden's going to flash in an Eldrazi or something. Right. Yeah, it's a full trade. Brian down to 10, but here's a monk in play. Both monks prowess. Both three shapers die. Now we get to resolve the triggers. One turns into a reality smasher. That's an Aiden's hand. The other one turns into a chalice of the void. Uh, chalice isn't the worst. You can set that on a one this turn. He really wants a land so he can start casting these yeah. reality smashers. Well, I do like setting it on one. The top card of Brian's deck, Sensei's Divining Top. So you, you need a chalice here. Yeah. I'm a little surprised that Brian didn't fetch. Maybe he has a detention sphere. Okay, now I'm not surprised. <laughs> and he does. Monk token, double prowess. Chalice is gone. Now we can fetch play a divining top. Another two points of prowess. That's seven damage. And he has a top. Brian's setting up for lethal next turn. And he gets to really freely attack here because of trading away with Aiden's board in the previous turn. Just gets to get him for seven. Yeah, Brian's done a great job here of recognizing his role. Instead of, we saw against Black Green, really no aggression on Brian's part, playing control, turning off all, I mean, what he won a concession because he actually removed all the threats from his opponent's deck. But in this matchup, he's reprioritizing. Monastery Mentor went on a very strong beatdown plan. Brian just started playing for beatdown. I think because part of him knows when Aiden's lands get going, Brian actually can't play control. Yeah. His cards, you know, mental missteps, just, you know, cards like Spell Snare. They're good in the mid game and early game, but if we go late, uh, the Eldrazi win. Yes. Yeah, not, not high access to mentors if there's only two copies, but Ponder and Preordain make them not terribly difficult to find. Yeah. Another Cavern of Souls from Aiden. Gives him Reality Smasher. Both players at nine. It's close, but passing back is Aiden. He can only block the biggest creature, so two non-creature spells make this a lethal attack. And with a Sensei's Divining top in play, uh, Brian can actually just ensure he has two cards. The top can spin and draw it. You know, you can start to spin and having it draw itself. We have two one non-creature detention sphere. And Aiden says that's enough. We're going to game three. Yeah, that, that just makes the attack lethal. You get rid of the, the Smasher. And it's just nine with your creatures. So, Brian Brown doing evens things up. It was a mulligan on Brian's side. But Aiden's keep, we talked about that bar of explosiveness Colorless Eldrazi needs. We've seen Aiden on a mul five win. And then we've seen a Brian on a mul six defeat a weak seven from Aiden. And I think Aiden had a lot of sixes that could have won that game. Yeah, maybe he's just at the bar a bit higher. Yep. We'll see if that happens. One more game to decide it all when we come back.
Game three on the way. Aiden Breyer and Brian Brown doing. So this is the first game where Aiden's going to be on the play. That and is scary. Yeah. Start making some mimics on turn one. Hit him with maybe a turn two thought not seer. When you're on the back foot against that, you can get run over really quickly. Yeah. Carlos Eldrazi just on the play has some draws that are positive against the entire format. Yep. Brian needs to hope that the Aiden doesn't draw one of them. <laughs> I mean, you know, you miss the old turn one, I have Ugin two mimics go. And you just think, oh my gosh, please don't thought not seer me. <laughs> yeah. Don't have any follow up. Miss your second land drop. <laughs> Leave me alone. Even your follow-up's just endless one, X equals three. It's still terrifying. Yeah, I'll take six. It's like, oh, you played two wild Nicattles on turn one. Yeah. Cool. Ooh, and we have a seven-card hand. Yeah, he kept, and there's Nyavugan in the front of it. Uh -oh. oh, watch out. Watch out. I oh, there's a mimic. Temple too. Oh, only one Mimic. We we maybe can beat one Mimic. Ah, uh, well, can we beat, like, turn two Thought Not Seer, turn three uh, Reality Smasher? Ceremonious Rejection, maybe. Okay, okay. Brian makes a fetch land. Does have three of those on the sideboard. Uh, mimic swings. There's no, there's no Eldrazi waiting. Aiden's hands mostly lands. Eldrazi Temple pass. Yeah, it looks like there is a Warping Will in the hand that was brought over over these dismembers yeah. that he had to cut. Yeah, and remember that Eldrazi Temple by itself can cast Warping Whale. It's not just Eldrazi creatures, it's Eldrazi cards. Yeah. Warping Whale does not do too terribly much in the matchup, though. So makes a Scion, counters a Sorcery, or removes a small creature. Yeah. The big Sorcery you'd want to counter is Supreme Verdict. You can't. There is that one Terminus. <laughs> they should have just, you know, to make it more of an Eldrazi card, say Exile Target Sorcery. Yeah. Just, just to dagger Supreme Verdict. I do wish that Supreme Verdict was worse. <laughs> That's a white card. <laughs> there is some just accepted variance with the Colors Eldrazi deck. You know, you see I, I have Ugin and Eldrazi Temple in your opener, and you basically keep everything. Yeah. You just have so many draws that just turn this hand on. A turn two Thought Not Seer is extremely powerful. Here. And there is a Reality Smasher, and the yeah. third lands will be able to commit that in the following turn at least. Yeah, we'll see if it's a Cavern of Souls. Brian right now pondering with a mana up. He didn't ponder on turn one, suggesting he might have a Ceremonious Rejection. Yeah. You know, Cavern is in Aiden's deck, but that doesn't mean that Brian's going to not board in the Rejections. Right. He pretty much has to. And it's not like Aiden's going to play around a one-mana card either. It's Yeah, what do you gain by waiting? Like the hoping Brian taps out. You can get to the point where you can cast two Reality Smashes in the same turn. And I mean, that's I think, like two lands yeah, later. that takes a lot. <laughs> <laughs> sure, two temples. Sure, sure. Two temples later and you it, have it. It doesn't take Brian long to cast two Ceremonious Rejections in the same <laughs> turn. Agree. Brian shuffles and draws off Ponder. Didn't really like what he saw. We'll go back to Aiden. It feels to me, Ryan, like there's a Ceremonious Rejection. However, if you want to find out, why don't you go ahead and try for Chalice on one? Yeah. Yeah, that tests that. See which way Aiden wants to go. He can run the Smasher out or the Chalice out. If the Chalice resolves, that just turns off any Rejections going forward. Even if Brian top decks him from there, you have to imagine if Brian has a rejection, he fires it off on the chalice. You just insulate against a lot of things with the chalice, though. Yeah. It's not just rejection. It's path to exile. There we go. He goes for the smasher, and rejection's there. So here's Mimic for two, and it's gut shotted. Brian covers them both. I'm a big fan of the gut shot. I don't care what Jarvis I, thinks. Well, in the Colossal Eldrazi mirrors, people would board those in. Now, granted, a Colossal Eldrazi deck just didn't have access to too much sideboard. Yeah. So, hey, this is something you could cast. It's zero mana, and it interacts with their zero mana creature. Pa preordained from Brian. So he's cleared the board on turn three. That's a big win for Miracles. Now can he turn the corner? Two scries to the bottom and a draw. Brian has not kept any cards off Ponders or Preordains yet. He went shuffle draw off Ponder, double bottom draw off Preordain. And that's the power level of those cards that you just get to do that. Certainly right. relative to Serum Visions, where you have to take a bad one, and then you get to scry. Ghost Quarter from Aiden Breyer. He still has 
Pithing Needle and Chalice of the Void. Now, if he's going to Chalice on one, he may want to drop Pithing Needle first. He's just going to run the Chalice out. Yeah, countering your own one-minute spell is not a great use of that. It doesn't really matter. Anyway, Mana Leak was there. And now you get to run the, hey, I have this one-mana card. Do you want to name Jace at this point, or is it still Sensei's Divining Top? I think you do want to make name Jace. Jace is a large amount more powerful than Sensei's Divining Top. For like on this board, if Brian untaps and goes land Jace, that's how you lose? Yes. But he'll just pass. He, the other thing you can do is you can wait and see which one Brian has. I don't think it's worth it. Once the first Jace activation happens, <laughs> Brian's kind of pulling ahead, whereas the first top mm -hmm. activation is just looking at cards. It finds a disenchant on the first try, and then you're... Yeah, it doesn't even have to be disenchant, you know, just extra cards in a busted format. You also have that window where Brian's tapped out, so you know that the needle will resolve, assuming Brian's on zero missteps, which should be the case. Fourth land from Brian. Shocks for Hollowed Fountain. That's dangerous. Taps three. Oh, looks like it's just Field of Ruin. He's going to go for Eldrazi Temple. Yeah. Why would be the reason to go for Temple as opposed to Ayavugan? So it's one better. The Carlos Eldrazi deck's really not building up to activating Ayavugan and using a seven to tutor. Ayavugan's also legendary. Okay. So Eldrazi Temples, having multiples, can build up your mana, whereas multiple Ayabugans is not very good. And if your opponent destroys one, you're pretty happy to deploy, deploy the second. Remember that, having played this deck with Ayabugan. I draw two, and you think I'd be unhappy about it, but no, nah, it meant I had one. So <laughs> yeah. whatever. And as we keep discussing, the deck really wants to mulligan to busted hands. Yeah. Having two Ayabugans, that's just a mulligan. You're, you do that it's anyway. Fine. Do that all the time. Warping Whale, reality, it's just Warping Whale wastes Pithing Needle for Aiden Briar. We'll see if he can draw a threat. Land and Mimic. Activates Blink Moth Nexus, swing one. Will Brian go to 11? He does. Not a super fast clock. No, right now, though, four lands next to the Ivoog. And remember, it is seven and tap that we are building toward. It seems a way away, ways away, but also Warping Whale can make an Eldrazi Scion token, which sacrifices for one. So that's five mana. It's not impossible, I think, that Aiden gets to tap Ivogan. Well, it looks like Aiden's being rewarded for waiting on that Pithing Needle as yeah. Brian plays a Sensei's Divining Top and not a Jace the Mind Sculptor. Definitely. And here's the activation, a swing for three from Aiden. Brian goes to eight. And now post-combat, we'll see a try on Pithing Needle from Aiden Breyer. He also, he'll go for Mattery Shaper actually first as the test spell. That would have been plus one damage if you could resolve it pre-combat. Yeah, Mana Leak takes care of it. This wouldn't have mattered either way. Pithing Needle, does that resolve? Does Brian have a Ceremonious? If Aiden pre-combats the reshaper and he hasn't activated the Nexus yet, though, he can just pay oh, he for mana pay. leak. I don't, yeah, I don't like I the like. sequencing at all. Well, unless you really, unless just you really want the needle, playing for the needle, which is fine. It trades with the Sensei's divining top. Brian, in response to the needle, looks like he's going to just spin top and tap. So this one, you put a spin on the stack. You tap the top in response. So now Brian will draw a card, put the sense the top on top of the deck, and then he'll rearrange the top three. This allows him to bury the divining top under a fetch land and then never have to redraw it. Usually you'll see players make this play when they don't have a way to remove Pithing Needle. Yeah, and really good sequencing by Brian there, though. You wouldn't expect anything less. One of those tricks that you learn from playing a lot of games of Legacy. I like it when my cards combo with themselves. Yeah. Yeah, top counter combos with counterbalance, but also it's just really messed up on its own. Aiden still names Sensei's Divining Top, even though the top's three cards down now. Back over to Brian. Looks like a five-card hand. Facing down Eldrazi Mimic and Blink Moth Nexus. Aiden, one card in hand. It's Warping Whale. He has an Eye of Ugin and five lands to go with it. If he draws a land this turn or next, it's possible we could see that Ayavugan activate. 
If it does, the biggest thing he gets is typically an Endbringer or an Endless One. Perhaps an Oblivion Sower if he's boarded them in. Mm -hmm. Oblivion Sower a fair amount worse than Endbringer. Back to Aid's turn we go. It's another swing for three, this time into five mana. But at some point, it's going to force a response from Brian. We'll see if that time is now. Two mana from him will be Disenchant on Blink Moth Nexus. Yeah. It is an artifact. Fair enough. Turns this from a three-turn clock to a four-turn clock, assuming yeah. you can stop the Mimic from growing. Two damage puts Brian to six. Land is Ghost Quarter from Aiden, and he passes. With the land in hand, do you think there's an argument for Aiden to not attack with Blink Moth so that he can try to set up Eye of Ugin? Uh, there, there is an argument for it. The fact that it's a three-turn clock versus a four-turn clock, if you're just chipping in with these creatures, I, I, I think is a strong consideration for that argument. Activating Eye of Ugin is pretty slow. It, it's entirely yeah. possible that Brian finds a Monastery Mentor is just able to close the game if that's the way we're playing. Repeal and step from Brian on the Mimic. We'll buy him two life, draw him a card. He's down to five, so now we do need to watch out for something like Reality Smasher. Yes. Better hope you have more of those ceremonious rejections. Love to find Jace the Mind Sculptor. That needle remembers on Sensei's Divining Top. Can Brian close? No one treat the angels. His finisher's Monastery Mentor. Says go. Aiden draws. And he draws Simeon Spirit Guide. This is one of those games where you'd like to be able to cast it. Yeah, we can't. Do you think now that you have Spirit Guide in hand, at what point does Aiden end step Scion? Just either for mana or for a 1 1 attacker? Yeah, I would be pretty inclined to do that on this turn. A little. They probably, Maybe even a last turn would have been yeah, fine. Yeah, I probably would have wanted to cast it in a while yeah, ago. There's not I, really sorceries you're countering. Brian plays a land and Aiden says and says go. Aiden doesn't make it. Ryan, I think Aiden's forgotten about that mode on the card. I mean, no one ever uses it, to be fair. Or it's the least used one. It's entirely possible. I mean We'll see if he does it here. Just like what else does it do in the matchup, I guess, yeah. is the question. If you don't know about that ability, what are you doing with the card? Exiling a Snapcaster yeah. Mage? I mean it's got it right this end step. Brian's at three. Like, Aiden should go for that. Yes. Six mana. Brian, Terminus on Eldrath. That one it's you a can sorcery. Counter. It's Get a sorcery. That one. Do that thing. Oh, wow. Does this one works. One Warping Whale. Wait, does he have another Warping Whale? It counters the sorcery. Yeah. <laughs> if this, is Brian going to spend a Ceremonious on this? He, he probably has to if he has one. Yeah, he's at three. He's dead to a lot of things, but... Yeah, he has to think, is he dead to a top decked? Because if he counters here, he's dead to any top decked creature. Yes. Uh, what Brian's debating here is should he ceremonious this and die to a top decked creature, or should he go to one? It's a big decision, and you see Brian's and say, fine, I'll let it get countered. You go back to Aiden, he draws. And a Mattery Shaper, that's a lethal Mattery Shaper, and there's the ceremonious snapped off by Brian. Yeah, he's able to stay he's down to one. one. Here. Don't love. Using a reflection on a reshaper, but hey, here we are. Back to Brian. He's at one. Can he survive? Does he have dig through time? Did he drew draw that? No, it is disenchant on Pithing Needle. There's Sensei's Divining Top. Spin it immediately. Try to track down a path to exile, the detention sphere. Ponders in the top three. Does he have to draw wow. a ponder, cast it, and shuffle for a path to um, exile here? Mm, I mean, I don't know. That's it's ponder, it's ponder, ponder land. Those don't do anything. If that's what he has, then yes, that's what he has to do. Sensei divine top, tap to draw. Oh, Aiden's thinking about ghost quartering him here. It's not the worst. No. You know, actually, Ryan. If you, he doesn't know what Brian's drawing. It's actually not bad for Brian, because right now what Brian's going to do is draw a ponder, cast a ponder, and he gets one blind draw off the top of the deck. Yeah. So shuffling his deck and getting land means he'll get one blind draw off the top of the deck. Yeah. So it doesn't actually hurt Brian, but hard to say. And this is going to be the last chance for Brian doing ponder. Thumbs up. Top three. Was the third one down any good? There's a Monastery Mentor in here, but he doesn't have the mana for it anymore. 
Yeah. If Aiden had gone... Oh. So what are we looking for? Okay, path? Yep, path to exile. Ruined halo naming. Oh, gosh. Eldrazi naming Eldrazi mimic. mimic. Draw from Brian. And does Aiden have it? Sensei's divining tap. The top drew into Ooh, another one. Still spinning for that path. Okay, top three. There's a misstep, a land. He doesn't have any more redraws. If nothing's here, he's done. If there's no path, you just activate the top and hope that Bri that Aiden ghost quarters you in response so you get a fresh draw. And that's what he's doing. Taps. Aiden says, it's okay. And then Brian extends the hand. I like Brian taking the line, but Aiden ner not yeah, taking good, the bait. Good read. Good read. And Aiden Breyer is your no-ban <laughs> list champion. Had it the whole time. Nothing to worry about here. Yeah.